Hi everyone and welcome to Facebook Live this week. So tonight I was going, I'm going to talk about and show how to make it nice and easy to get a harness on your cat. Harnesses can be really helpful. This is Binks, my little friend here. Yeah, and I'm gonna feed him some food so he likes being up here. But um, harnesses can be really helpful for a couple of different reasons. It's not only for maybe taking your cat outside for you know going out in the yard, kind of a walk for enrichment. It also can be a good alternative for than a collar for having a cat to wear their identification tag, which is really important as we're coming into hurricane season right now and there's actually a tropical storm up in the northeast of the United States right now, uh, you know, affecting our uh, areas. So we can have the identification tag on the harness in addition to a cat having a microchip. A third benefit of the harness can be uh, for when they come in for veterinary care, or veterinary exams, oftentimes you can hold the harness on the cat as a way of like holding their body without actually, you know, having to touch their body. And this is really helpful for our cats who tend to be very reactive to touch even when they're on medication. And lastly, at, there's some ways of, there's ways that we like, I like to use a cat on a harness with a leash for learning how to co peacefully coexist with a housemate cat. Sometimes we have a young cat who wants to scamper and lunge onto an older cat, or maybe we had where the one cat lunged and attacked the other cat, say seeing another animal outside or a cat outside. And now we're trying to reintroduce these cats and we have to get to a point where the victim cat can see the lunging cat, but we limit the ability for the cat to lunge. And that means the bully cat or the lunging cat has to be happy wearing a harness and leash and being limited in how much they may be able to move around in that stage of the reintroduction. Okay, so let's get started here. I have here, let's move over Binks, because it's hard to see. It's a black harness with a black cat, of course. Okay, with for Binks, now when I got this harness for Binks, it was kind of in the days before we had a lot of the, um, you know, padded, smaller, vest-like harnesses that we have for cats. Now you see a lot of those. And those can be very easy and comfortable to put the cats, you know, in. The technique I'm gonna show you here is the same. Whether you're using, this is more of your strappy, you know, it's actually a small dog's comfort harness. So Binx's head is gonna to have to go through this loop and this comes down under the chest and then it's gonna come around his body and clip up top. Now there's about four steps for putting a harness on a cat, getting a cat into a harness. And the first step is we want to have a cat somewhere where it's easy for them to kind of be in a crouched or semi-standing position. So this could be on the floor, but you're gonna to have to be on the floor, sitting or kneeling to put this on your cat. So depending on your own physical ability, that may be easy, may not be easy, okay? Um, for me, it's just a little bit easier being on the table, especially for filming here. So we're gonna to want to set up a place where the cat likes to come up. Now you can see Binks likes being up here. He's very accustomed to coming on top of the table for getting some rewards for his checkups, his exams, for grooming, you name it, and of course filming here on our Facebook Lives. And that's exactly what you want to do. So make that happy place for your cat. So we have that. Now the second step is, I have actually both the leash and harness here, and I think it's best to start with just one. So let me set the leash down. So I would have the harness laying next to this food dish, and now I have Binx's canned cat food. And hey buddy, mm, you want some of your canned cat food here? So I just put a small amount. If you saw that, you would see, wow, that's only about a half a teaspoon. Yeah, okay, and I can bring it to you. Of course, your cat will do that. And while he's eating the food, I wanna lay the harness right by that. You may even, now in this case, because he's gonna have to, we have to put his head through it. Yeah, buddy. I may actually even lay it like that. So he's putting his face right up to that nylon webbing of the harness to positively condition him to wearing the harness. I'm just gonna sit down here because I think it's gonna be easier to see me. Okay, you can do the standing or sitting, but so now he's eating the canned food. Now then you can actually take the harness and, sorry buddy, as he's eating through it, <laughs> let's go back to eating it. This'll be when you can actually take your hands and come over here. Now I like to have a cat 
kind of get him accustomed to sitting like this when he's eating. So if he backs up, he can't really scooch away from you because he'll come against me. And I'm gonna, so that's the first step. He gets accustomed to seeing the harness, the harness is laying on the plate. He's okay with having it near his face. Second step is we need to get it up over his head. Now the type that kind of come up over the body and just Velcro or clasp only over the top of the back, you would have the harness laying flat and the cat standing with his paws in those armholes and eating. That's your uh, second step, really, that he's getting positively conditioned to standing in the harness. Okay, well, this is a different type. And now the next step I need for Binks is to be happy about having it put over his head. Okay, so for that, I need to coordinate a couple things. A good glop of the food he likes. And after he's maybe taken just one or two bites, I'm just gonna lift his little head up here, pop the harness over and let him go right back to eating. No other touch. Just get that harness over his head and then let him be rewarded for that step because that was a fair amount of stimulus. Same thing with pulling up on the body for the harness. Wait a second so the cat starts eating before you clip, okay? So here I've got it over him and now I'm gonna take his little paw and go through the one arm loop there. Yeah. And he goes back to eating. And the other one, I know it's hard to see because he's a black cat, but we're coming back over the top and we clip. There you go. And now you can go back to eating. So by ending this with him eating and standing comfortably in the harness, this is how he gets accustomed to the first steps of just wearing it, just having it on his body. Now we need to check the fit. A lot of times these harnesses may be a little bit loose, and that's when we have the cat who slips out of the harness because the cat is very agile, and the cat's body, cats are actually pretty, you know, long, like long tubular shape. They don't have like a broad shoulder and then tapering back as we see in dogs. So for the cat, just one small shift of like the shoulder can have where this slips down and then they can bring their elbow up and they're out of the harness. So to prevent that or really limit that, I like to test the fit. So to test the fit, and I think this would help, well, let me see if I can hold him against my body. That's partly why I'm wearing my white coat here to show here. But if you can kind of see against my shirt here, I am only able to just slide my thumb between the harness and his body. That's how snug you want it. And that's how it is all the way around. Actually coming up under this, like I said, it's a comfort harness. So it's, can you show people your white chest here? It's coming straight down like this. And even here, see, it's only about one finger width. You know, I can just get my finger underneath it, but that's as much give as it has. If it was any looser than this, that's how it starts to slide on the body and the cat can slip out of it. And then you get in a cat fight or you lose your cat when you're trying to, you know, put, uh, get them in the carrier or during the vet exam. So tighten these up. A lot of times I'm uh, having to adjust these harnesses to be much more snug than how the client has put them on. Okay, so once he has it on, have him wear it. Now some cats, they roll over, they act like they're dying wearing it. And if the cat, give the cat maybe 30 seconds to a minute and when they, if they stop doing so much of the rolling, part of the rolling, I think, is just them getting accustomed to feeling this on their body. It's, it's really kind of like puppies getting used to wearing, you know, collar. They do a lot of scratching at it and so on. So as they wear it, um, start, get their favorite toy and try to entice them into play. Either laser light or a little uh, catnip toy. And on the first day, I would have them wear it for five to maybe 15 minutes, okay? Uh, if they are resting wearing it, that's all right. It's a part of them getting, becoming habituated to it. But each time you put it, put them into the harness, you must go through these four to five steps. And each step has to be paired with a really motivating food item. I find that food is the best reward for the cat to not play because I don't want their body moving around. We want the cat to learn to stay still while we get this up on you and hold still for it. That's what we want the cat to learn. So after the cat is accustomed to wearing the harness for at least a couple of hours, okay, make it like wearing a wristwatch. No big deal, you put it on, you leave it on. 
Then we're gonna work with the leash. So the first thing with the leash is, have the leash sitting next to the plate. And we're gonna, come here, bite. We're going to, again, feed him for when you see the leash. Yeah, you haven't had dinner yet. This is din din time. Okay? I had one client contact me. Her cat was very upset from just the leash. <laughs> and it occurred to me, the cat has probably never seen a leash before. And it startled him. So uh, we are doing this and after like a day or two where he's fine with the leash being right next to the plate, then all we're going to do is clip it onto his harness and leave it be. Because now he's just seeing it attached to himself and I want him to walk around and just drag it. Now this is a lightweight leash. This is probably only a half an inch wide. This would be fine for most cats. Now some cats who are real fast at lunging the 10 foot long uh, dog training leads are maybe about an inch to an inch and a half wide, so they're a little bit heavier. And actually, I, I want it that way. We want the, bu the bully cat, the cat who's doing the tacking, to be moving more slowly. And the harness will have them, they can walk and they can run in it, but they may be just a little more slow because it's kind of like clothing on their body. And we want that, you know, we want them to move more slowly because frankly, we want them to learn to move more slowly towards the victim cat. And with the heavier kind of fatter leash, if you need to suddenly pick it up to stop the cat from really going after the other one, you want something that is not going to be ripping through your hands or burning your hands. You want something that's going to be easy on your hands to hold. Now, Binks, he's not had a problem with lunging or aggressing on other cats. So the leash is basically just a handle on him, if you will, because he does go to, uh, you know, events when we can <laughs> during COVID-19, sorry, um, or, you know, visiting at schools and uh, demonstrating and handling labs, etc. So, you know, if he wanted to say, just jump off the table, he could do it and we'd have a hold on him. Uh, so have your cat drag the leash around and that's pretty much it for putting cats in harnesses. Now, a few ways of handling the cat when they're in the harness. So let's just pretend we're here at a veterinary uh, examination and Binks was a very touch reactive cat. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about, the cat where you start to touch and he flips his tail and he starts flicking his head or he kind of jumps up and turns around at you. So you know that we have to touch him minimally. And some of those cats do not like towel wraps. Maybe they have had, you know, a towel wrap and they had two or three people holding them down for a procedure. And now the cat has associated a lot of you know, fear and anxiety uh, with the towel, so they don't want to be touched at all with the towel. So the way we can use the harness is I could just, or my assistant could just literally hold the harness here as a means of holding the cat. And he doesn't feel a hand on his body, which he really likes. And again, we could then, this is just a handle. So if in a moment, say if I had to give an injection, he wanted to lunge forward, I could stop his motion back. If he wanted to flip with his head, I could pull on the harness this way to, you know, orient his body away from where he's going with his head, okay? And if he's accustomed to wearing the harness, if he's happy wearing the harness, he isn't going to mind even the touch on the harness. It's something he is used to. Uh, in the event, if you have to do a sudden evacuation, and, you know, let's just say um, a tornado is coming, and your cat won't get in the carrier and you're like, oh, we have to get to the basement right now and you need to pick your cat up suddenly, it can help to go ahead and put your fingers like this right through the back of the harness as you lift your cat, okay? Because we no scruffing. <laughs> You've heard me before and I'm gonna say it again. No scruffing. Scruffing is forbidden. And I don't wanna hear about anybody doing any scruffing just really it's the last resort in only very, very few cases. So let's prepare ourselves. Let's prepare our cats to be ready for maybe a way of a quick having to pick them up before they dive underneath that sofa and, you know, danger's coming. So you could grab the harness and doing this, this is not as upsetting for the cat. And you have a handle on them and now I could pick them up and we could go or even if I needed to load them into a carrier, I could be able to point them in or even if I needed to go uh, like the back way in, I can do this and I can even keep my fingers, I don't know if you see them right now, but they're like hooked through the harness to keep a hold on him so he wouldn't escape. 
Okay, and again, I'm talking about urgent situations, you know, uh, tornadoes coming, or maybe, um, you know, fire or something like that. But harnesses can be really helpful. Uh, a lot of cats need this extra small size of a dog, dog harness. Uh, you can, there's lots of different styles to order on Amazon, yet um, make sure you have a good maybe return policy because I've just seen so many of even the padded harnesses. When you do get them on the cat, either the front part here, you know, that part that comes across the chest is kind of loose fitting and that's where I've seen some cats slip out of them, or the arm, the arm side, that's like the cup, you know, where the arms go through that can be loose and the cat rolls and then he's got one arm sticking out the wrong way or he pulled the other arm through and he wiggled out of it. So um, for myself and with Binks and uh, my other cat Ranger, I liked these extra small uh, dog comfort harnesses. Some of the ones that are padded work pretty well, especially on the bigger cat, but these are the ones I like. Make sure they fit really snug. It's kind of like wearing, you know, a snug safety belt, frankly, that's about the equivalent. And then with the leash, sorry buddy, have a leash and just have them accustomed to dragging around, you know, wearing it wherever you go. So thank you very much. I look forward to your comments um, and I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.